Everything discussed on this show originated as public information. Mm -hmm. Commentary is given about what has been said or done. And if you don't want to be discussed on this here show, then you need to make sure that whatever you got going on don't never make it to the internet. Because once you get on the internet, I said I'm going to talk about it. I don't care what y'all say. All right. Let's go ahead and get started with this show. Let's go. All right, welcome to Larry Reed Live tonight. This is what we have to do. Last night we went live and I basically read to you guys a letter that I had got held of, some information that I had got held of as it relates to John Gray and the Relentless, aka Repentless. And the reason why I say that I call it the Repentless Church and not the Relentless Church is because John Gray has yet to repent for all that stuff he got going on on a public platform as hard as he was going out there trying to disprove everything that I was saying, that the side who was saying on the voicemails and all that kind of stuff. So therefore, he got the name, our baby Jake's who we love. He has the name, his church, his ministry, Repentless. Mm -hmm. So I read that to you guys, and there is a um, alleged accusation. And that accusation is that they have not been paying their rent. Well, I have heard back from the Grays via two of their lawyers. And I promised them, they didn't ask me to, but I promised them, and they thanked me for doing it, that I will read to you guys their side of the story. But before I do that, ain't it funny how they only focusing on this rent thing? And this eviction. But ain't nobody saying nothing about divorcement. I just want y'all to sit on that for a little bit. Sit right there. Sit down on it. Put a little condom on it. A little lube on it. Sit on it. Sit right on it. <laughs> like you're getting paid. <laughs> I done jumped into the whole thing. And then I'm going to discuss. Actually, I'm going to discuss first about Pastor Keon D. Henderson and Felicia Henderson. The spiritual children. Once again, here we go. Another spiritual sibling. So, I mean, children. Of Daddy Jakes. What in the whole hell and the heaven is going on in Texas? And when it comes to Bishop Daddy Jakes spiritual children, it's like they just can't keep it together. But anyway, I'm going to start with that. But first, let me intro. Hello, my name is Larry D. Reed, and you have tuned into your most favorite entertainment digital news and talk show. What that means? That means we come here to laugh and cut up at the same time. A lot of times... Like Beyonce said, we get information. Y'all didn't even catch what she was trying to say. We come here and get information. And so listen, let me tell y'all this. What I need all for you, all of you guys to do, the 110 plus thousand of you on Facebook and also on YouTube together, to right now hit the like and the share button now. I'm going to sit here and wait. Thanks so very much for hitting this like and the share button. You got to hit nine to my them thumbs up and the hearts and all of that. Thank you for them. But the like and the share button before we go forward. And hello to over there in Periscope. This is the storefront church over here in Periscope. They ain't but like 139 of y'all over there. Thank y'all for hitting all them hearts. And make sure you go ahead and share on your Twitteration so that everybody can know that Larry Live is on because we have an update because we have heard, and I'm going to go ahead and let you know that they are, they are almost entirely denying everything that allegedly the Redemption Church, Ron Carpenter and his wife Hope, are alleging as it relates to the behavior of Pastor John Gray, our baby Jakes, and Aventer, our Avenger, Kendall, 
I don't want to use that. I am not looking at him looking like that tonight. And you got another headshot for him? You, you didn't change it out? I can't do it. You got to delete that and put some mess in there. Didn't I email you something? This is, this is terrible. Kendall, while I'm doing this little talk right now, I'm about to start with Key on them. I need for you to change that picture out because I can't stand looking at baby this. <laughs> I can't do that. That just ain't going to work. All right, so let me go ahead and get started as it relates. Oh, hold on. What I need to do is, is go ahead and get the commercial out of the way. What you think? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this commercial. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to start with Keon D. Henderson and his wife, Felicia, because I do have a statement that I want to make concerning that. I'm just going to stay on this probably like 10 minutes. You go ahead and tell everybody that you know that I'm going to recap and read to you the response from the lawyer. See, what happened is what I read you guys, as I said when I was live, as I continue to say that they're getting evicted or and they got to be out by this certain day, I was reading to you and saying to you what I had seen with my eyes. This was not conjecture. This is what I seen with my eyes. Although I was told November the 28th about it, I had to wait till I see it because they ain't going to come up here and just talking mess, especially you no know, folk like the send me cease and desist letters. I got two today. I just left court this here morning. While we talking about court, put my lawyers up there and we got to say a word of prayer. Lord, uh, Lord, now, and um, this here Jew and this here Muslim, I'm asking you that you will re-anoint them to do as they do. I thank you that they working hard and thanks to Unwind with Tasha K, who's fighting with Cardi B right now, some of every darn body, as she do what she do. Thank you for her giving me, loaning me. I wish she had loaned it with a deposit, but these lawyers that have been helping me fight the good fight of faith. Thank you right now, Lord, and we give you the praise. Amen and amen. Bless this Jew and this Muslim. They're very nice people, and they're good at what they do. Those of you that want to continue to help, yes, I'm $21,000 poorer. And I say about 8000 of that, you guys help me um, to pay. I want you guys to continue to help me because it's not close to being over. And as you see, because I just read, let me tell you what, how the preachers do. I just read a letter and told y'all, and I done been sent threats from the relentless church leaders, assistance to the leader, lawyer them. You must take, let me just give everybody a hint. If you want to send me a cease and desist letter letter cause you a punk and you ain't got nothing else to do because you know here I believe cease and desist letters are for punk. If you are a public figure and you can't handle me sitting in this chair just talking about my, this commentary on what I think concerning you. You don't need to be no public figure. You ain't got no business been no leader, no preacher, nothing. You can't take it. Take it and sit down somewhere. I have to take it when y'all talk about me. But no, y'all want to drag me to court for this, for that, for this. And it's just the burn up money. That's all it is, because the first thing I got to do is get up here and tell a lie. The second thing I got to do is tell a lie with the intent to defraud. Thirdly, with the intent to affect you negatively. Ain't ain't none of them in my heart. <laughs> and there are a hell of a job to prove. <laughs> so you just really wasted your time. Go do something else like pay rent. Allegedly. <laughs> Go do something else, like squats. Okay, you're too little at the bottom, too big at the top. Now, y'all know don't take, don't take that stuff too bad now, you know, because this is an entertainment show, so I'm going to clown you if you end up on this show. Just take a little grain of salt, giggle a little bit like you had a comedy show, getting roasted by the person on the stage because you, you a heckler. Just take it now. Take it now. Take it like some of y'all take these young girls and boys for gentity in the name of the Lord. 
All right, let me go ahead and get started. Cause I already started cutting up already on tonight. We're gonna first start with Keon D. Henderson and Oh, I'm sorry. Let me do this 30 second commercial. Some of y'all need a prophet, and you need prophecy. Call the most trusted name in prophecy. 30 seconds, I'll be right back. Like right now and share. And I come back. We're gonna get started. Are you in need of direction for a decision you have to make? Maybe you're curious about the future. If that's you, the founders of Zoe Ministries and the Company of Prophets are offering you free prophecy. Call 888-831-0434. Don't wait. Call 888-831-0434. Do it today. All right, I am back. The most trusted name in prophecy. What that mean? They've been prophesying since some of y'all was a baby. Now, I ain't going to sit here and make you feel like that when you first call, you're going to get him because that is not going to happen. But I'm just saying, go ahead and get connected and get woven into the thing and then maybe you fall upon him one day if you do what you're supposed to do. Anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is Keon D. Henderson. Now, let me begin this segment like I did when I was reviewing The Preachers. Remember the show? And I talked about I love this show and talked so wonderful about all of these preachers. You know, This man, when I first ran into who he was, I talked wonderfully about him. I even took him from zero to hero. What that means for indie artists and gospel music, one of the things I do, aside from consultation and um, this show and life coaching and personal prophecy and coaching and all that spiritual stuff, I also um, did radio promotion because I have a record label. I took myself first there, and then I took him as well. So now he's a Stella Award-nominated artist. So I want you to know that I think that this is a cool dude. I think he's a cool dude. He can sing. And his teaching ain't that bad. It, it, really, it ain't that bad. He's tall, about six. How is he about? Because he's standing a little bit over me. So he's taller than 6'2". I think he may be 6'3". Dressed real nice, especially as of late. You know, I think he got hold with the stylist bowling. And that's funny because um, the Avenger did too because she wasn't always dressed in this pretty as she have recently. But I think she with the um, stylist bowling. I can't think of what his name is. Jay Bowling, that's the name, Jay Bowling. And so the, the Jay Bowling got all these church folk looking like they got half a little bit of sense. And it's working really, really good with him. He had on a yellow thing with a stripe down the side and a white one with a stripe. He... The boy is dressing, I think, wonderfully of him, okay? As far as what I know. All right, book close. Open your books to the page of Reed. That's R-E-I-D, A-K-A, R-E-A-D, and let's get started. <laughs> oh, because I can't stand what I don't find out. Just get up on my skin. Let me tell you this. As pastors, I've done it for 20 years, not doing it anymore. I guess in some form I may be still pastoring, but I ain't pastoring like dead. And in that position, you have a high responsibility. And let's even deal with some of these church names. Lighthouse. The name of his church is Lighthouse. Lighthouse means that you are a guiding light. In the community, which I must say that you have been, you know, up until. And a lighthouse is tall like he is, right? Tall he is. He look like a lighthouse. Almost right down Cape Hatteras. You ever been to Cape Hatteras? Yes. Big, tall, light. Right there on the side. This lighthouse. There's no coincidence. God just, you know how he does. Ooh, he's just, so, he's just lining stuff up. Now. Some months ago, a picture came out. First of all, let me back y'all up. Let me back y'all up because I ain't even told this. Let me tell you. At the time when I was being his radio promoter and really mentoring a few, well, actually one, a couple of his assistants, Aaron Carter, and I think her name was Nicole or Lisa. I can't remember. 
really showing them how to handle this whole thing. And Aaron Carter produced my first single, Better Than Ever. Look at all this, this stuff coming up years ago. He's from Fayetteville, Rafe from North Carolina. So I knew him and Angel Davis before they went there. And Ernest P Pugh was his praise and worship leader. And Ernest Pugh was the first person out of the gospel community to try to offer me a record deal, you know, but that's when we bumped heads and we had nothing to do with each other. That's not the case no more. We squashed that. I just didn't like the deal and went and started my own mess and still got the same results. So um, it's just funny how they all ended up there over there in Texas. Now, I'm going to share with you something that, and I'm always, I'm only able to do this when you become public. And Keon became public due to a picture that got online and in the hands of his praise and worship team and many different people, a, allegedly a picture of him with his peen out of Condurn Troll. Laid up in his hand. Peen sat up in his hand like this. With his hair wrapped up, you know, he like to play basketball. And he always wrap, it, wrap the white thing around his head, you know. And he had just, you know, they, they got this shadow thing around his beard. All that's in there. So, and it looked like he looked. It was a screen grab, was what it was, of a video that somebody wanted me to pay five thousand dollars for, and that ain't how I operate. Y'all had to go with somebody else with that kind of going on. That they, they didn't have to I operate. First of all, if it, if what has became public don't create no good conversation, I ain't even going to be even putting it up. But prior to that, there were rumors circulating, and I never discussed this until sitting here today. But this is with the whole story. That Ernest Pugh, his ex praise and worship leader was fired or something happened between them two and they got into like a debacle. Rumors started circulating. I'm not even going to say the extent of what some of those rumors were, but you can only imagine. Then allegedly there was a rumor that Ernest Pugh had to sign a non-disclosure doohickey get a lump sum payment to keep his mouth closed about whatever had went on and going about his 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 life. What's one of his hit songs so everybody know who I'm talking about? Sure, yeah, Ernest Pugh. I need, glory. I need how'd it go? I need your glory. I want your glory. There's another one that's something about rain. rain how'd it go? Rain on us, rain on us, shower down, shower down. Oh, rain! Rain, rain on us, hallelujah, breathe on us, shower down, shower down, let your spirit, Lord, hallelujah, let your sin, sing your spirit, I don't be knowing, this is, I'm telling you, that was the beginning of the fluffy song era, when all these black artists want to start singing these fluffy CCM songs, and y'all is niggas, I mean, excuse me, y'all black folk, which and where y'all singing these songs, that ain't what we do. But them, the Ernest had want that bad, but it was the beginning of that whole thing. Then break every chain. I mean, y'all doing too much redoing these CCM. Y'all taking these white folk songs and blackifying them, gospelizing. <laughs> <laughs> And what is it, black folk with white souls? You know, white gays? What is it? Get before the presence of the Lord, write your own song. A nigga tune. I mean, a black person tune. Gospel. Something we got some soul in, we can feel it, man. Okay, anyway. So, um, so that with that. Next thing you know, I'm not even going to go into that because that part ain't even public yet. But there were rumors of a lot of sex, illicit sexual activity surrounding Keon and in his camp, particularly in the music department. Now, if this comes out more detail, then I will go into what I have receipts for. But there's no need to go into that 
because I'm not sure if any of this plays into this, uh, this divorce. I ain't got to say alleged because I done seen the, the paperwork with my own eyes. Okay. So when those rumors started circulating, mind you, I'm mentoring the people in on his team, taking them to the Stella Wars, showing them how to do they, their um, I Like production company. They've been mentored by LDR Enterprise. And when I came across it, another vlogger was about to do the story. And I'm like, oh, shoot. He don't really need this right now. I'm trying to take the Stella Rewards. And my name is all on everything. There's an email and back and forward and everything with Don Jackson them. I don't need this on LDR Enterprise. So let me clear him. Pastors, preachers, listen to me. And I want you to remember this. If you ch choose to fight me and send me cease and desist letters, you are going to lose. That's number during one. Number two, this is a known thing with celebrities. You never, and y'all want to be celebrities so darn bad, so let me help you. You never make media mad. So when you send me a letter like that boy did today, LaVon Johns or whoever it was, don't send me no letter to my right now, take down that. That's, when you do that with Larry Reed, at that moment, you make an enemy. Because you don't try to call me and try to tell me what to do. First of all, you everybody know who my lawyers are. Why is you even emailing me, getting up under my skin? We're them to death. This is what we pay them for here on Larry Live Far. So I can stay creative in this space and not be fooling up with y'all. Email them, Olga and Sadir. Olga and Sadir. Don't bother me. Yeah. All right. See, just don't do that. But if you call me, or when I call you, just tell me the truth. Tell me what's going on so I can work with it. And I can help you get in front of your story. Had you done this, Keon, this would not be happening now. None of what has happened would have happened. You didn't listen to me. I don't know if Jake's been telling you what to do or who you were listening to, but you need to learn to listen to the folk that's expert in the field that you happen to be stepping over in. I and the advice that Jake's might give you might be Jake's advice. Jake's is daddy Jake's. He cannot talk about nothing anybody's saying in the media for the rest of his life and probably want to halfway harm him. But you coming up, address it. So I called him. I said, look, bro, this is what is being said. And this is before the screen grab got out. If you want to see the screen grab, if you are part of Patreon, you can go see it. It's in there. Now, I said, is the rumors concerning, and I'm not going to say them right now, are the rumors concerning da 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 any truth to this? Now, I didn't know this side of Keon, but he went off. I said, wait, wait, wait. I said, hold, I'm just asking. I heard this before. Now, if you hear X, Y, Z, now that might be the truth. If you hear about me messing up, this is exactly what he said. If you hear about me messing up with some girl, da, 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 then that might be true. But da, 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 da. I said, well, I just asked. I don't know why you ain't going through all of that. But let me tell you this. If anything ever going, call me. I know who you are, Keon. You're not one of them preachers out there. You know, I think you ain't bad as like the rest of them. Some of the rest of them. Many of the rest of them. <laughs> what I said and that was that okay so then fast forward to a few months ago 2019 because that was 2018 this picture came up and I, I was live on air I can't remember what show it was but I, I got pissed I was shocked first but then I got pissed because I'm like I told you something go on tell me what y'all think? I, 
I was 20 years past the travel around the road doing take care of my churches, got drafted into this. What you think I got drafted into this for? One of the reasons for this kind of going on. This is the information age, and y'all folk don't know how to keep your hoes happy. So your mess start getting out. And all of y'all where your mess get out on ain't bad people. It, you just been a little messy. You just, just ain't clean, clean up. You ain't keep your hoes happy. You got to make sure you can, can't do Christmas and Thanksgiving because you got to be with whoever you with for real. But your side hole the day before, the day after, negotiate that, buy gifts, pay a couple of rent. You got to pay your sin bill. That's what I meant by Jesus paid it all. <laughs> pay your sin bill, your child of God. Mm -hmm. So, with the help of Jesus, you can pay it all. You can. You take care of the bills of the house, your wife, your children, and your side holes. If you're going to have them. Now, I'm not saying that it's right for you to have side holes. I'm not saying that. But if you're going to do that, you got to do wrong right. And if you're a child of God, you'll follow Jesus. Jesus paid it all, and so should you. Pay it all. Pay your hoes. Pay your sin bill. Your sin debt. The wages of sin. Okay? Distribute them wages. Keep folk happy. Give these women, these boys, their dignity back. If you're going to be blowing their back out and your wife's, if you're going to be blowing her back out and your wife's, then you need to already know that you need to make sure <laughs> that you keep that whole happy. Because she's going to take somebody a picture of something. It's going to be on somebody's vlog. It's going to be a mess. It's, you just don't want that going on. But anyway, so this picture came out. I got up to the darn set. And I texted them and I said, I ain't going to read it straight out of the phone because I think I can halfway remember it. So I'm paraphrasing. I said, what is this and is this you? And he was like, that ain't, it's a $3 bill or something like that. It ain't real. It, you know, I said, so you saying this ain't you? He said, no. I said, all right. Now, mind you, I got two eyeballs. This, 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 this is me. And it could not be him. In fact, let me say this so we're clear. He denies it. I think I said that in the post in Patreon the other day. He denies it. So we, we, I have to tell you that. Just like the John Kelsey and um, what's that girl name? Octavia that said that John had drugged her and raped her. I came back and I said it was the same time I mentioned it and put his name on it that he denies it. And I read that long thing where he said he denied it. This platform is going to always be fair because that's just that's who I am. This ain't no fake. This show is an extension of me. So anyway, he says a $3 bill. I said, I, 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 I. You know how we do. I, 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 G-H-T. I. Then he texts me. And th this, this, this bothered me. Let me get a drink of water. Make sure y'all hit that like and share now. Then he said, is this a video or a picture? I said, nah, what in the wait? Wait, wait. So I, what I did, I hit that button on the side of my iPhone, make my screen go black, the reset, and open it back up, put my code back in, and went back to the thread and look. He said, is this... <laughs> God was just made me, my eyes were messing with me. Is this a picture or a video? I said, <gasps> <gasps> went right into the Dante. Calls for me. Now, I don't know. Maybe it could be just, a, um, just that's just what first thing came to his mind. But to me, I'm like, now, wait a minute. If there ain't no possibility, I ain't, it don't matter for picture video, it ain't me. I said it ain't me. So I just left that where it was. At that point, I was like, mm, 
I don't know. Maybe maybe you one of them lying people. Then, right after that, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna even skip one part because I don't want to make the narrative go a certain way. That's why there's certain parts of this I'm not telling because I don't want the narrative to go a certain way. I want to stick around my experience and the receipts that I've seen and have. That's it. All right, so we let some, another vlogger or somebody pick that part up. I'm not doing that. Okay, so anyway, then I heard and I went right to Patreon that the that the wife hadn't been going to church. So but I didn't even tell Patreon. They said they troubles at home. So I said, You talking about Felicia? I said, yeah. I said, oh, girl, she's so fine. And his children are beautiful. A beautiful family. I'm like, oh no, what done went on? Next thing I knew, Daddy Jakes went to his church and preached. And strolling them all around the altar, snotting on his shoulder and, and praying for him. I said, oh, Lord, Jake's know something done happened. Because <sighs> that's why he, he's the restorer. He's the repairer of the breach. <laughs> he going to come in there and lay them hands on you. He done did with everybody. Chris Hill, Juanita. He done did with it on uh, uh, baby Jake's. Our, uh, he done the J.D. Bush bar. And I think Kakora had told him what was going on with him and his wife. I mean, it's just what he do. He just had tried to help everybody. But Jake's, I'm going to tell you this. Keep your hands to yourself. From In 2020, I prophesy that your hands shall not touch and forehead, that you ain't done your research or your cheering. See, the problem is you're going to be on social media the way you need to. And you don't be knowing what's going on in these streets and making you look a little sideways. Because we're trying to figure out why in the whole hell in the heaven as you keep... Your name keep being connected to these folk. They, they just, they, they, they're not where you at. So go on somewhere, sit down, quit touching on folk. Just speak the word over the phone, through the text. <clears throat> Don't call them up in front of the church, lay hands on them. You done Chris Hill like that. And then he's still in the house with his hoe, allegedly. They done left his wife for. All right, take Jake's out the stream. Y'all know I love Jake's, but I'm just going to keep it real. Now, uh, and so I started asking around. So folks start lying to me. And when I say asking around, I'm talking about people who have called me before with information that nine times out of ten I haven't been able to use because it was they were disgruntled. You know, because folks don't like rebu rebuke. They don't like order. They leave a church, get mad, lie on the pastor, lie on the first lady. I, I was a pastor for 20 years. So my lens in doing this type of work is going to be a certain kind of way. Because I know <laughs> Excuse me. I know how folk can be. And so I won't be taking what folk be saying. I'm like, mm. <laughs> really that happen? <laughs> Receipts, please. Receptacles. I get back with you. That won't nothing but all what you feel. You don't even know nothing. Now, I'm not saying that that means that they be lying. They just don't have the receipts. <laughs> before you leave that church and before you call me, make sure you stick around long enough to gather data before you come calling me. Because hey, I can't help it. Look at all these victims that left me out here with these, these bills like that. I got these two children trying to take care of them, breadwinner, her backbone, man, everything going on around here. I said $21,000 in lawyer fees. I didn't say $2,100. That's since September. I want you to sit on that now. There's some things that I had to put on back burner forever. Well, not forever. At least for the next long piece. <laughs> The victims, oh, I'm going to be right behind you. I'm going to help you with the lawyer fees. <laughs> now I ain't saying nothing. Going on about their business and left me out here. But it's all right. It's all right. Because this, yeah, let that be. So then our, uh, um, next thing I know, they say, allegedly, October the 27th. He stands in the pulpit and he says, me and my wife, Felicia, and I'm paraphrasing, we're going through some changes because she ain't been to church. 
we going through some changes. You know, she's the host of Closet Chats. Lady Felicia Henderson said, me and my wife, we're going through some changes. I think Closet Chats is, is a YouTube, a digital show. So just Google it. You can find and watch it if you want to get to know her some. It's the Instagram page as well. Yeah, so you, you just go look. It's the digital show. That's free. Don't ask me to do this no darn more. I don't do nothing free. You, if I advertise for you, you going to pay the MBN Network. Thank you. Take it off. <laughs> All right. So um, I said, he said what? They said, he said that they're going through some changes, keeping in prayer. Everything's going to be all right. It was like a little whitewash stuff. Like what they said, baby Jake's done last night. Remember, let me remember that, um, Kendall, so I can bring that up in the, in the story. Come back to get to that. So I said, really? So I went to Patreon. I ain't bring it in the publications, although it happened in the public. I could, but I wanted to verify this was October 27th. So November the 4th, I posted in the Patreon. And basically, I was fishing, trying to see if somebody going to come back to verify that he said it. And they did. Um, so I had the verification that it was said. And the way I judge a word of mouth verification that's not, not a receipt, there's a certain amount of people and a certain type of people I have to hear it from in order to know, okay, this occurred or something similar. That's why I'm paraphrasing what he said. But if you go to Lighthouse, you know that it happened. Okay? And that's not a lie. All right, so I said October 27. So then I begin to read during search. This is where my problem come in at again with Keon. Cause remember I said when he told me about that picture, then asked was it a picture or video. I said, oh, you're looking like them lying folk. Now I find out that you tell the folk to pray and you're going through little changes, but that ain't the truth. And see, I can't, I, as y'all in them pews tired of folk playing with your intelligence and think you just dumb, they get in there and tell you, oh, it's a strange woman. Ain't that what the Avengers said? The devil brought and was talking to the eight-year-old John or something like they said. 15, 16 year old, I don't, I don't care what you call it. You know, you can spiritualize it, you want to. You got a man that's cheating and ain't happy with just you. That's what the reality is. Quit blaming this woman and the devil and sit in your problem and have that conversation and quit with all this church craft. Let me introduce to y'all what church craft is. Church craft is when you over spiritualize something. And make it about the devil, you project on the devil, you deflect on somebody else, and you talk in circles and use scriptures. And y'all been in the pulpit, yeah, that's in the, in the audience, yeah, all right, y'all were clapping your hands and listen to that dumb bullshit. <sighs> Lord, here I go with my silent cuss words. I'm going to try to stay away from my fake cuss words and my silent cuss words, you know, but I'm going to do the best I can. But this enter during time and y'all know in comedy they cuss. So you're going to get the fake ones here. That thing worried my nerves. When y'all do that, it's so dumb. I'm the newest member of the family, the stupids. Now, when I research, you, you sat up there in that... <laughs> On that stage with that best outfit on, your dressing ball head self. And you just, you just glazed over it. See, that work in the church, and I guess the church ghost and the church God is okay with that and let y'all do that and be blessed. But the God out here in these streets that I know, that I, that for me, that God is Jesus the Christ, mm -mm, you don't play with that. You're not going to be dancing around and no dishonest and painting the picture. Couldn't I find out. How are you talking about y'all working on something when you the one that filed for the divorce and had done it two to three weeks prior? Liar. <laughs> I don't understand. And they're going to try allegedly to take the kids, particularly that youngest one, 
and said that she abandoned the family because she moved out of the house because you basically told her that you didn't want her because allegedly because she not what you want her to be because she ain't the kind of first lady prophesying and, and a tall drink of water and singing and preaching like Yolanda Adams. I might be telling too much. Let me wait a minute. And see, that's what I have a problem with. Y'all know I don't like that kind of going on. I don't like that. You want to get on my bad side, start with that fake stuff. If somebody called me today, you probably watching, talking about you want to sit down and talk to me and try to work some things out. Before you come talk to me, you, you, you best, I'm, I'm going to say it like this so I can flip it. You best make sure that you come with proof that you're trying to pay to take care of that secret baby. And you sure better not come telling no lies. Because I act dumb and smile, but I ain't. We can't have no conversation. I can't help you. If you're going to tell the truth, then I can help you. I know how to do this. All right. You heard me right. So they said what they said. We're telling that tale and then filed for a divorce and trying to make her look like she abandoned the family. And she lied but not going to say something, although she is the type of woman that, you know, she ain't quite like the regular first ladies. Because allegedly she got a really nice coin. She got that same payout package, severage package that Ernest Pugh got. <sighs> that same time with all that stuff we're having that picture came out, then this alleged information about Daryl Walls, you know, he just went over there and started being praise and worship over there too. And allegedly supposed to be standing... Oh, that's a whole nother, that's, that's a whole nother thing. Oh, it just all, and then the sextivities in the music department, the passing of STDs by certain people in the music department, media department, for rucking. But if people position is needed, you won't sit them down, won't confront them. If they're a family member. I just, I just, I just, I just. Let me tell you this. This really ain't as bad as I seen. So Keon, and I know somebody gonna tell you. Go ahead, right? Don't you do like Baby Jakes did. And let me say this. Any preacher we ever talked about up here, y'all gonna be all right, cause they're always gonna be 10, 20, 500, 200,000 dummies. That don't read their biblications, don't have no prayer life, and gonna live out your mouth. So you're gonna be all right. But when we're talking about righteousness and right standing with God and holiness, the holiness, the horizontal, righteousness, the vertical, and getting all of that to get, be honest. And, and I'm gonna say this you may or may not have to be honest at, on this scale. I'm not talking to you, Keon and Baby Jace. But I'm talking to the rest of y'all. Because y'all are public figures. You just need to be honest with who you need to be honest with. Because everything what you got going on in everybody's business, it don't always ain't gonna be everybody ain't public figures. You get what I'm saying? So remember, I told you this. Handle this right. Don't take no rights and talk about abandon. Don't do that woman like that. Don't do that. Go on back to that lawyer. Fix that. Don't let this be messy because she knows secrets. And don't you tap the bitch in her. And make, I'm trying to cut every woman got that in her. You tap that, you in a mess. And do, do what's right. And somebody said, well, it could have been her. And let me tell you why I look at the man. Because, see, I went through divorce. I was married 18 years. Yes, yeah, she, she left with the children and later on married a female. Y'all know the story. We've done it here. Then she got divorced and, I, and the kids are back with me. But when we sit down and talk, because we're still great friends, when we sit down and talk, or when I sit with myself and talk with myself about what happened, I don't be thinking about her. I look at me because I'm the head. And let me explain what the head means. 
You see, this is a triangle. Right there, that's the head of the house. The house is actually an upside down triangle. So the head, the man, is really the foundation. And once he shifts in responsibility, in spirit, in prayer, in finances, sexually, mentally, it shifts the entire house because the father is the beginning of the family. The man is the foundation that everybody stand on. So I had to take responsibility. So I'm blaming Keon. I don't even know what happened. It's your fault to fix it. Give her half of everything. You can sign no prenup. Make sure she's doing all right. And the, and the kids, they girls, I think, let them be with their mama. If she ain't on drugs and, uh, and uh, uh, beating them or however, let them have them. And why she over there in the house with her daughter for allegedly? Why you ain't put her in the place? Well, me and my ex... My former wife separated one time. I paid for the apartment. In fact, when she left her wife, I paid for her to go into another place to get out of the house with that good woman that had cheated on her. I don't understand how y'all men are God. And y'all don't even come to the standard of these men in the world on love and hip hop. Y'all pastors out there that ain't taking care of your children, don't know their name, just sending money or throwing money at them. I had Scrappy D. Leon up here. He talked about that. I mean, y'all scrub, scrubs. I want to say scrap. Scrappy. I meant scrap. Yeah. Point is, and y'all supposed to have the Holy Ghost and leaders. This is, this is not a good look. Y'all regular niggas. Okay, what? It seems like I'm fussing tonight. Okay, let me get off this subject. Time to go to Baby Jake's. All right, let me tell y'all what done happened. Now. Who did what last night? What did it do? Kendra, I can't take that picture. Don't, don't bring that picture over here. What'd I say? I can't remember. Bring um, Baby Jake's and the... Now, I'm going to say this. We're going to start with the positives. I done done it one time before. And this ain't lies. This is very true. I told y'all I admired Baby Jakes, especially when I first found out who he was. It was a couple of years ago. Because he's a comedian, a Christian comedian, praise and worship leader, musician, singer, songwriter. Plus, he's a preacher. And he works in the entertainment world with the cold comedy thing. And then he was also on on TV show. So he's, he's a, in a whole lot of different spaces to where he can influence people positively. I absolutely thought the world of him because of what he was doing. I can't never say I've looked at him as a, as a pastor or an anointed man of God. He just was gifted and it was funny. It was a bright light. Seemed to be a great guy. I still feel like that. He just handles stuff wrong. I feel the same way about Bishop Will, William Murphy who buried his child and hid him from everybody until last year when I had to talk about it. And at first he got put Larry Lyon talking about him for about two minutes. Bishop William Murphy hid that baby then, and then talked, got in the pulpit and basically threw off on me because I talked about it like I was lying then eventually came back at the Prophet Todd Hall, allegedly rebuked him and told him to tell his church on a Tuesday night. Then he came back and sung a new song. I respect all of that. The, the throwing off at me, then coming back repenting and owning it. He didn't really own it the way. And he said, give me some time to work on it. Now it's going on two years. You still ain't got it right because you went over there Thanksgiving at your daddy's house. And two of your sons were there. And, and allegedly they're saying you barely spoke. And how is it your son going through so bad? He moved in the house with his granddaddy. They both go to their granddaddy church, your daddy church. All y'all need to go on the altar, including your pappy. Because how in the whole hell and the heaven that Christian, the seller's baby, your baby that's almost seven years old, who's throwing fits at school, crying for his daddy, y'all all right there and didn't nobody call over there to see if Christian wanted to come the way that boy love you? And y'all men of God, I 
don't have no words. I don't understand that. I'm a father. That makes no sense to read. None. And it shouldn't make sense to any of y'all. That's all right for the brother around the corner and your uncle now that don't know Jesus. Or maybe a new, fresh, saved young man that got children strolled out there and, and just got to work on some things. I want to talk to that boy in that skirt. That boy in the skirt that we had up here with the um, kilt on, they said that he had a whole bunch of children and he won't take care of them, but eventually he ran into a prophet that prophesied to him, mentored him, and now he has a relationship with all seven of his children. These folk ain't in the pulpit talking to thousands every week, and y'all don't know what in the whole hell in the heaven to do and can't keep your peen in your pants and pastor. You ain't got to be perfect. If you slip your peen out in a few couple holes here and there, we forgive you, we understand. It's unethical, it ain't right, but a few here and there, okay? You go through that phase, you wake up and say, all right, I'm just saying. I ain't saying it's right, but I understand if it might happen. David did it. <laughs> That's what you got to say for now. <laughs> Put that picture up there that I don't like. <laughs> Y'all know what he's saying. David did it. <laughs> David did it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring her to the hotel room. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, okay, I'm quick. Bring both of them. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Look. Oh, I'm about to read his response to the show last night via his lawyer. All right. So first, let me say this. They look good in this picture. John Gray, wearing your shirt tail out. The shirt is a little bit too big, though, because you got a little bunch in the front. But this is perfect, being that you're small at the bottom. Them legs is skinny. I don't even know. It, it is a phenomenon. Wide as you is at the top, and you're so skinny at the bottom. If that wind get the blowing, It would topple over. <laughs> oh, that's best. All right, I can stay stop. Okay, let's get to the story. But this is a great look. This is a great outfit. Don't y'all look great? If you agree, say, I agree. I agree. It's a nice outfit. It's a nice outfit. It is a nice outfit. If you agree, let me look and see. I see y'all talking about just tell the story. This is what I want you to do. I want you to get your off my live. And go find you somebody that you want to listen to and to talk that ain't me. Because here I take the long way. Ain't nobody listening to your back end on your live because you ain't even interested. Y'all done made me go Matthew Stevenson on y'all. <laughs> y'all remember Matthew Stevenson when that comment that man talking about you ain't no pastor? He said you is ugly. And you. <laughs> And this dog being prophetic and told his business about addiction to porn. I can't. Anyway, so I think this is great. Let's not be haters. Give honor what honor is due. He's a talented guy. He's a gifted guy. This is a great outfit. Avenger. And there's a, let me tell you why I call her the Avenger. The reason why I call her the Avenger because... When he, a whole lot of stuff he started during, it's almost like she always knew and would warn him, but he still gonna be dumb. And then, like, when he fell, like, she had to stand up and sort of like take the strong position to the point he started calling her his covering. I guess that's really his covering because who they say allegedly he say is his spiritual daddy, he said that it ain't true, but you know. I ain't going to say that because I don't want to mess up nobody's relationship, but you need to check that. You know who I'm talking about, baby Jakes. <clears throat> but anyway, she looks good in this picture. Exceptionally good. Go to Jay Bowling, IG. He been dressing her. She looks good. Why he can't be faithful to her, I don't know. Like I was saying about William. Uh, Murphy and him. 
I don't think they're bad people. I think if I sat down with either one of them, we probably would laugh, have a good time. I probably could look in his eye and see all of what I'm talking about, what I like about him. But I'm just the kind of friend that's like, dude, you got to fix this because this ain't right. And I think you guys don't have friends around you. I saw on the IG that there's Isaac Curry, James Fortune. You hang around the wrong folk. You was a whole pastor. Ain't none of them no pastors. And all of them, them has the one beat a wife upside the head allegedly, and the other one allegedly is not hasn't been faithful in times past. It's alleged. And I and I've been in the same room with with both of them acting a pure fool, grown men like they're twelve year old. That is no, not who you need to be hanging around. You need to be hanging around some folk that's where you're trying to get. Make them your friends. You have fun later. Just sacrifice all fun. You ain't going to have none. You got to be a pastor. And that whole thing Jake said about the stage growing you up and God using the church to grow you up, just scratch all that. He was just trying to help you out. He didn't even mean it. <laughs> all right. So that's that. They look good. God bless them. They are the pastors of the Relentless Church. The Relentless Church. Uh, pastors Ron and Deborah. Ron and Hope. Carpenter turned over the church to them. Gave them the keys back in May 2018. They started the Relentless Church. They entered into a lease agreement. Let me read you. What broke yesterday, then I'm going to read you exactly um, what is being said in response to what I read last night. Now, mind you, along with this letter, I was told by the person that sent me this letter. Uh, and I maybe I shouldn't say it like that. I done said it. I put that out there, but I ain't naming no names. Um and I promise I won't name names and I never will and I never do because that is how I operate during rate. That will be the end of this platform if I ever share my sources. I will never share my sources, um, even when my back is against the wall. All right, this is the letter. I'm going to read. In fact, I was sent the same letter today. So let me read that. Uh, let me make sure it's the same letter because I was looking. I said, oh, this is the same letter. Yeah, this is the exact same letter. All right, so I'm going to read the whole letter now that I have the whole letter sent to me in email. I'm not even reading it from the from the one that I was sent, the screenshot. Of. It's the same letter. And this is via certified mail return receipt request. So this is hand delivered and certi certified mail and hand delivered via hand delivery. So it was sent hand delivery. Anybody that got good sense know before you get a, a court-ordered eviction, the landlord has to notify you, a notice of eviction, and that's what we talked about yesterday. And a notice of eviction is always connected to some kind of money that has not been paid, and this person told me that they were a half a million dollars not paid. Could or could not be true. According to what they're saying back, it's not true. So we're going to read that. But let me read first. What was sent? Pastor John Gray, the Relentless Church, in care of Lavon Johns. That's that nigga that sent me that missed the um, assistant. I'm wondering where he. Anyway, um, Twin Willis Towers, Chicago. Bra 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 bra. Said um, 30 day notice of termination of non residential month to month lease. Dear Pastor John, this law firm, along with Asiatico and Associates PLLC, represents redemption. Redemption owns the following real property. So I'm going to post this letter in Patreon tonight. Those of you from Fox, from um, TV One, I think it was, US Today, and I couldn't give it to you because I didn't want to sh share my source. Being that it's been emailed to me from someone else now, I would gladly give you these receipts. So just contact me, admin at um, LarryLive.com and I'll give it to you now for your article so you can have it because um, now it can be from anybody. Um, this law firm along with Akla represents Redemption. Redemption owns the following real property that it leases to the Relentless Church under an oral mouth <laughs> excuse me 
oral month to month lease agreement that was entered into on or about May 13, 2018. Number one, 635 Haywood Road, Greenville, South Carolina, 29607. 80 Birdland Drive, Greensboro, I mean, sorry, Greenville, South Carolina, 29607. Please take notice that redemption as landlord. Uh huh. That's Ron Nim. Day Church has elected to terminate relentless month to month lease of the properties identified above, and Redemption is providing this 30 day notice in accordance with South Carolina Code. Da 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 da. And that's all I read yesterday. I'm going to read the rest of it now. Relentless must completely vacate and surrender the properties to Redemption on or before 30 days from the date of this letter, but in no event later than December the 31st, 2019, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. I did read that part last night. If you fail to vacate, this one I didn't. If you fail to vacate the properties at the above stated date and time, redemption, world outreach I think it is, Pastor Ron and Hope Carpenter, will begin ejectment proceedings. We hope that such action will not be necessary during Sarah. This notice of termination is given pursuant to applicable law and in no ways impairs any of the other remedies of rights of the land war under applicable law. Very yours truly, John R. Devlin Jr. Mm -hmm. Got that. So I've done that whole show. Then somebody screenshot this to me that the Avenger put up somewhere. I don't know who Facebook or wherever put this what she put us let's read this and see what she said okay it's not showing up so let me read it to oh here you go it said the avenger monique hold on uh, avenger the avenger monique cotton gray why she, she got four names she from the country ain't she? that's what we do in the country we give you 50 11 names i'm so done emoji 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 where is Kanye when you need him? Sing with me. Not closed on Sundays or any after day. I mean, I guess you mean any after day and the day after. Know the facts, love. Oh, I hate that. Or you'll be looking cray. I have joy because when God handles your business. Okay, now see, this is this kind of stuff that they do in the pulpit that I got on them last time. Don't say nothing. I done told y'all one time. Y'all stay off the social media occasions because y'all did it. Only a certain kind of member like that. Some members don't want to see they, they, they pastors going back and forth on social media like that. Some can appreciate it. The millennials may appreciate it. But I don't think this is a good look. And I really don't like the, the digs that y'all pastors like to take at people that do not agree with you or just have an opinion. Last night's show, like I do any show, I just read what I was told that I saw and was confirmed that I heard initially y'all was saying I was lying, but as anybody that follow LRL know, there ain't no lies told here. <laughs> They're allegedly down there for a decoration, really. Because <laughs> it, there'll be no lies. But I say allegedly because that's what my lawyer's statement saying. Just, and I would rather you say, I mean, it's fine. You say you say it's a lie because it's what you believe. And let me look at that good. Bring it over. What what I just read? I want to look at something else she said. And you know, I like look at stuff two or three times. Got to be dissecting it in my brains. Uh, I'm so done with kind of things. I know the know the facts. Okay, let me say this to you, The Avenger. And you know I have been team The Avenger. I just played with your name, but I've been team The Avenger because you done been through. I tell you, been through. But all that boasting, know the facts. Do you not remember the voicemail I played yesterday? He said, and she does not know. You know the facts. And they're snoring. Sleep. Because that's what he told the side hole. We all heard in that 22 minute video. It's on my YouTube. Y'all go watch. When he said you snore so much, he somehow he can't sleep. You can't know nothing sleep. Snoring. So you know the facts. 
All right, I just had to tell you that. God bless you, the Avenger. Um, all right. So now let's read this in. <clears throat> Lord, this thing is so lit. Look. Let's see if I can find it bigger because my this ain't working. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna read both. I'm gonna read both. No, first of all, let me read the cease and desist. Y'all know cease and desist letters. They are for punks. Somebody asking me to sing it. <laughs> no, these folk already upset. Um. All right, I got you. Two news people just um, hit me up saying they want it. Okay, I'm going to send it to you right after I get offline. I got something to tell y'all that I found out right before I went live because they're just getting out of a meeting they had at 5 o'clock at Relentless Church. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8. And they did open up the floor for questions, but that did not go good. Um... Daddy Jason, you need to get down there to Greenville because something is out of order. Or Joel or one of y'all, get on down there here. Okay, uh, let me see. Um, let me find this here letter. Mm, they said she jumped up in somebody's face like she was about to fight the young man. That's alleged. Because we won't there, we don't know. But I did hear from one of them side hoes that the Avenger was going to fight one of them girls. Mm -hmm. It was an Avenger that jumped up in the in the boy's face for expressing the concern. This hot off the press. Okay, hold on. Let me find this. Let, oh, here, here it is. I think this is it. Okay, let me read y'all this, the cease and desist before I read the reply. And this is to me and to the MBN Network. They call me the CEO of it. P.O. Box 244 224. That's where you're seeing y'all miss. He says, cease and desist notice. Cease and desist letters are for punks. Oh, cease and desist letters are for punks. Oh, you always got something to say. But when somebody else does, you say, no way. Oh, cease and desist letter. Oh, 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 for Punks. And let me tell you why I call you punk. When you're a public figure and you send the cease and desist letters. You're a public, public figure. Especially y'all preachers to get in the pulpit and throw off on everybody. Call everybody out their name, the sins, the gays, the, the adulterers, the shacking, everything. The last thing you ought to do is send somebody a letter for calling you a name, clowning you, or saying something. Because y'all so mean with it. You're punk. You dish it, but you can't take it. All right. I saw a punk today. Oh, I'm stop. I'm, I'm stop. All right. <laughs> Dear Mr. Reed, my firm request. Y'all listen to this. Tell me how y'all respond to this. My firm request Pastor John Gray, I mean, represents, Pastor, this thing is too little. Jesus Christ, gotta make it bigger. This firm represents John, Pastor John Gray in Relentless Church based in Greenville, South Carolina. I have reviewed the YouTube video you posted December 4, 2019 entitled John Gray and the Relentless Church Ruined. Your video broadcast is full, full of seriously defamatory lies and have truth. Now see, that's what I love. When they start this defamation stuff because... I don't like when I have to pay the lawyers when they respond to this stuff, but it's a real waste of y'all time. A real waste. Seems like you ought to learn from those that went before you. Relentless Church and the Pastor Gray have not been evicted. I never said that they have been evicted. I said they are being evicted. Did I or did I not? Did y'all not hear that? I did not say that there was a court order eviction. I said there was a letter sought that they had to a certain day. Y'all lawyers, Kim, I don't know if y'all listen to y'all clients or y'all just want to make up stuff and think y'all, cease and desist letters don't scare me. You become content. Y'all ain't learnt from all the people for y'all. Oh, Lord. As you repeatedly state, 
and have paid and are current on all lease payments and on other church bills. Okay. That's what you say. I read what allegedly and apparently Redemption Church Ron Copper and Hope saying that ain't the truth. But hey, I'm going to be fair. We demand, see this, the, 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 the. we demand that you immediately cease and desist from any further dis discrimination or oh, dissemination of these defamatory statements by any means or media and that you immediately take down the YouTube video you posted yesterday as referenced above. Y'all are totally out of your mind. Do, can you go to somebody's house and say, take down that painting? You ain't got no power and no authority over here. What is y'all on? Y'all high? Mm -mm. You are, so, this is that, that, see what it is, what these lawyers do, especially the black ones. I know this probably a nigga lawyer. What they probably, the, excuse me, I'm sorry. What they end up doing, it's like when we're dealing with each other, when it comes to law, because you went to school and be, be a lawyer, you feel like that you, you, fit, that you can just tell your folk and boss your folk around because you can use these terms and these big terms. That don't work with me. It just does not work. There's no part of me that has fear of something with two legs and a ping like mine. Well, it probably ain't like mine, but you know what I'm saying. But <laughs> that don't scare me. Huh? No. That don't bother me. You just become a part of the show. That's what you do. Yeah, content. Love on. What's his name? Love on. Oh, this is J. Stephen Welch that wrote this. Excuse me. But it was sent to me by Wanda, who's the assistant of Lavon. You are subject to the courts in South Carolina. <sighs> anyway, that's all that. Y'all got a whole mess because y'all ain't figured something out because this is coming from Chicago and I'm in Atlanta and the church is in South Carolina and then talking about actions can be taken to seek injunctive relief and damages. How? We've not signed any contract. We're not in no relationship, so you need injunctive relief from what? I would like to know what, what, did I make a promise to you that I broke? What, what? I want you to go to law school. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I got that right. I'm going off memorization. Mm. Oh, Lord, this is so long. All right, now let's read what the grays now, wait a minute now. What I do with that piece of paper? Is that it? Nope, that ain't it. All right, let me find that piece of paper. Uh, is that it? All right. Nope, that ain't it. <laughs> is that it? Yep, here we go. Are you ready? Hit the like button and go ahead on and share. I'm about to read the reply from the Grays' lawyers to the lawyers that wrote the hand-delivered message to. This, Lord, this is redemption versus relentless. You know what? I thought about the other day. Let me say something. Because I mentioned about Lighthouse, about these church names. Before I even get into this letter, I want to say something to relentless about your church name. Relentless is an adjective. It means oppressively constant. <laughs> it also means harsh and inflexible. Why in the whole hell on the heaven would you want to be oppressively consistent? I know what you're going to do. You're going to, with that church craft, spiritualize it and say that we're relentless. You know, what's oppressing us, we oppress it. Okay. I just want y'all to think about these church names a little bit more. Just a little bit. Because y'all manifest a relentlessness that is oppressive. And I'm not talking about it in a positive light although you may do it in a positive light as well. I just think, even when you name these cheering, why 
what the world y'all calling these children the names for? All right, let's side note. All right, let me read this letter. Got sent to me not long ago. Now, the lawyer who wrote this, I'm going to go ahead and tell you in your um, greeting, you put the wrong name. So you liably would like to put the, oh, no, 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 that's right. No, no, that's not right. No, you didn't. I just remember because you got to respond back to his lawyer and his lawyer name is John. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. Dear John, I am in receipt of your letter reference above, which was delivered to Pastor John Gray of Relentless Church. Our firm has been retained by Pastor Gray and Relentless. Now, wait a minute. That's what the other letter said. That, was this the same firm? This is a note. I don't know. I'm mean, just um, anyway. There may be the retained two lawyers. Probably one for defamation and one for this. Yeah. Okay. As you may be aware, Redemption Church and Ron Comforter could not follow through with all the terms of the original transition agreement related to property when Relentless moved in. Wait a minute now. So they are alleging that they aren't the ones that ain't kept the end of the bargain. It's really Redemption and Ron Carpenter and Hope. All right. Let's sit on that. Let's chew on that. Chew on that for a little bit. How that taste? Swallow that down. The digest. You got it. So they are saying, you know, this is about to be some mess. <laughs> and I got a a comment about this too that neither side may like. But anyway. As you may be aware, Redemption Church and Ron Carpenter could not follow through with all the terms of the original transition agreement related to property when Relentless moved in. Subsequently, two leases were negotiated to allow Relentless to lease the property, which you list in the letter, until Relentless exercised its option under those leases to obtain the properties. Based on those lease terms, Relentless has paid and is current on both leases. All right. This is what they are alleging through their lawyers that they do not owe anything and that they are current on their leases. This ain't no matter of you say tomato, I say tomato. No, you saying as black, I'm saying as white. They ain't even close to being on the same page. Not only that, but in the letter, he goes and said, not only are they current on both leases, but it's possible that they have overpaid based on rent increases dictated by Ron Carpenter and Redemption. This is a whole fight. A whole fight. This is a schoolyard on the ground scrap. You ain't pay me, yes I did. You ain't pay me, yes I did. You ain't pay me, yes I did. You didn't do what you supposed to do in the lease. Yes I did. This is this is the back and forward. Lord, Lord. In addition, we are in possession of a direct message on Facebook that Hope Carter recently sent to members of the Relentless Congregation. Copies are enclosed for you to review. We ask that you immediately cease and desist with direct messages and other correspondence with the relentless members. As you can see from the message, Hope makes very serious defamatory statements. These lawyers kill me with that. She calls Pastor Gray a shady mind and dishonest. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. She goes on to state that Pastor Gray and Relentless are three to four months behind on all the bills and that we, Hope and Ron, that is, will be taking our church back. She then says, we are very excited to have our campus back, but we are very sad John Gray has not lived up to his end of the bargain. The exact opposite is true, says the lawyer. Pastor Gray and Relentless have gone above and beyond the original transfer terms to make this work. It is Ron Cop 
carpenter and hope and redemption church who could not comply with the transfer agreement. It's them. So this this we own to ain't even finished. We own two whole different pages here. There ain't no there ain't no parts where the crossover like that, like so. It's like this. Not like this. See the little cross? It's like this. We are also having a hard time understanding how an entity, much less a Christian ministry. Uh oh, here comes the read. I want you to get your books and I want you to open them up. To the page of read. Are you ready? Let's go. We having a hard time to understand how any entity, much less a Christian ministry, can expect a church the size of Relentless to move in 30 days, especially when the rent is current. Could it be that the threat of eviction on a 30-day notice is really so the carpenters can do exactly what Hope has outlined in her Facebook DM? I certainly hope not. We are all hopeful both sides can take a breath and sit down soon to resolve this issue reasonably. If that is not possible, though, then Pastor Gray and Relentless will have no choice but to protect their reputation. They cannot sit back while such defamatory and untrue statements are being purposely spread. Your 30-day letter was leaked to a religious gossip website. Wait a minute! Wait, <laughs> you try to shame my platform, a religious gossip website, and last night, a 90-minute, I didn't even see all this, a 90-minute YouTube show was broadcast titled John Gray and the Relentless Church Ruin that has already received over 40,000 views. Mm -mm, correction. 80,000 views. You're just looking at the Facebook. It's over there on YouTube as well. You need to count the periscope. If you're going to talk about me, then talk about me right. In it, wait a minute. I ain't know my name was in here. Larry Reed states that Relentless Church has been evicted for not paying the rent and is behind on bills. Y'all really stretching this, what I said, though. I see what y'all trying to do, though. Because let me tell y'all this. You know... That all these pastors is connected, right? Mm -hmm. So they try to find these loopholes to take me to court. How your letter was leaked to Larry Reed, I do not know, and you won't ever know. But now you done sent it to me, so hush your fuss. But we are investigating. You ain't going to never find out because I ain't going to never tell you, and no court will make me tell you. Thank you for your attention to this matter. If you have any questions, please give me a call on my cell. Sincerely, McGowan Hood and Felder LLC, J. Stephen Welch. In closures. Oh, they got in here with the end. Well, this allegedly is the inbox that hope. Let me see what she said. I'll put that in Patreon. But he says, you'll see what she said, word for word. But he put in there sort of what she said. I done read in a way. So I put it in the Patreon for y'all over there. Ooh, <laughs> well, we heard what they had to say. Well, what y'all got to say? Put that number up, Nancy. I'm going to let these folk call in here and say whatever they want to say. But you got one minute. Because y'all come in here. Oh, don't. Well, you got one minute. One. I need everybody to like right now. And how many of y'all is up here on this on this website tonight? They six thousand of you again across all platforms. Look, I need all six thousand of you to give one dollar towards my lawyer fees, as I was in court all day today. And these folks are gonna. And you know I'm gonna have to go to court over this. So if you've been blessed. By this ministry of talking about the mess. I need for you to go right now and give what one of them asked for $1,000. <laughs> Bishop said 3, 13, and 30. Any of those three will support. All right, the number 646 786 784. Hallelujah. You got one minute. So once you hear me call your number, and, and ask you your name and where you're calling from. Say your name, where you're calling from. 
shoot with what you got to say. Just come on with it. Let's shoot it right on out. Did we put a picture of Ron and his wife? Not one time and I said Ron Carpenter 159 times. Do your job. Do your job. All right, let's go. Larry, uh, calling from St. Louis, trying to figure out when, uh, what's going to ever happen with the video that came in from the um, alleged um, side chick that Pastor Gray had. And then, two, you got to quit coming for Pastor John Gray's neck. I, I like Pastor John, and I appreciate you putting it out there. Um, I think he's been... Uh, one of the phenomenal ministers that we've seen in a while. Um, I just want to see him clear up some of this controversy surrounding himself. With his but for the most part, I, I do like Pastor Gray. I appreciate uh, what he contributes to the gospel. And um, is there any sense of what's going to happen now that they are firing back and saying, hey, well, we've been paying with the actual lease versus the verbal agreement. I'll leave it there so other people can get in too. Thank you so very much. I do agree with you um, and everything that you said as far as I like how you like John Gray, but then you also appreciate having the, the same conversation. And please know when I'm joking and stuff, that's this is entertainment. People don't watch me to sit here and report news like a news reporter. This is an entertainment news show. Thanks so much for calling in. Um, He also asked me when was the video coming? I never said there was a video. I never did not say that there was a video. So I don't know where he got that from. I did play the voicemails. I played voicemails um, between him and the um, side hoe. And I also played 22 minutes of the three hours of audio that I have as she talked to me about her relationship with Baby Jinx. Um, I haven't released that. I only released 22 minutes of it. It's on YouTube and Facebook. You can go back and listen to it. Um, you can do that. I even think I I released another audio of her, but with a distorted voice. So I have a few links that are up that you can get into that conversation because I don't think what I shared on the 22 minutes is the same that I shared with a distorted voice. So you got to listen to both of them in her own voice. And the reason why I put that up is because they went on the reel and they said some other things that I just knew wasn't consistent with the story that she was telling me. One or two things, either they just flat out lying or his relationship with her is was not the same one they were talking about in the pulpit and on these um, outlets. I, I don't know. I don't know if I ever know um, because church, some church people and leaders, they have such big egos and narcissistic they can't sit down with somebody like me who is going to look at their humanity and talk with their humanity, you know, not call them by their title, call them by their first name and really have a regular conversation. I don't think I'll never know. I don't think he'll ever do that with me. But if he decide to, um, that would be great. And even if he decided to do it behind the scenes where it's not in front of a camera, I think that'd be great because I've done that with other people before. I've done that with Brian Karn, you know, after he allegedly copied that witch. And I dealt with him, talked to him. He talked with me. And I got to know Brian, not Prophet Brian Karn. Superb guy, great heart. Um, I may find out the same thing, which I do suspect concerning him. Like I said about Keon, I think the same thing. Um, I think the same thing about Will Murphy. Um, just get in bad situations and just ha choose to handle it in the way that is not righteous and is less than proper for a moral leader. And please, I hope that what I'm saying don't make it sound like I think people got to be perfect. I don't. When I tell you I don't believe that thing, you'll be surprised what how I probably feel about certain things. I don't expect that. <clears throat> expect that, but I don't expect you to be right here harming nobody or doing anything cruel to anybody, um, hurting anybody and doing them a certain kind of way on purpose or by mistake over to and over to again. Because if you do, you can have me to deal with. 
And none of you guys can control me. I want you to get this through your thick skulls. <laughs> not, I ain't scared of none of y'all. Oh, I got to get my gun up out of the car. I left it in my glove compartment. I'm not scared. Of, remind me, Nancy. I ain't scared of none. Well, I got my other one in here, though. I ain't scared of none of y'all. And I just thought about the gun because I was thinking about protecting myself, but I ain't talking about them guns. I'm talking about these guns right here. These hands right here. Weapons of mass destruction. God bless these country knuckles. You don't want to fool up no country person. No, we had to fight everything. Antimals. KKK. <laughs> Running from the cops barefoot. We made out of something different. Busting wood at nine years old. Go find you somebody else to play with. All right, let's go. I done got caught up in talking. I'm just running my mouth. I got to go. Let's get some more collars. Yeah, let's go. Oh, Lord have mercy. Caller ended in 1675. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Nicole from D.C. Go Wait. ahead. This is Nicole from D.C. Okay, I can hear you, but you go ahead with your question or statement. First of all, you got to tell us what happened tonight at the church. Second, why do these people who's not in the Larry Reed church keep playing with you? When you came out with this yesterday, and then five minutes, you had 10,000 views. I said, this is all true. John Gray needs to sit down somewhere, go sit, do his work, Talk to Ayanga. Tell them people in the church the truth. Tell his wife the truth. He may need to come to you for some help too. But keep on doing what you're doing because the only way that you can keep presenting this stuff is because you're preaching a message. And for all them people that was on the Thomas of Name, see the point of you doing what you did last night, y'all dumb. The point is you need to open your eyes and pay attention. If your name ain't on the deed on Redemption's property, hashtag sit down and shut the fuck up. <laughs> ah, you put that R in there. Save the day. Thank you so much for calling in. <laughs> All right. Let's, Thank you. Bye. I, I see you um, You guys doing the cash apps. Thank you so very much because the lawyer fees are real. <laughs> Real, y'all remember that song? Real, he's real. Come on, Jesus is real to me. Uh, y'all probably don't know that because y'all that new church saved. Y'all ain't got the original Holy Ghost and paper Bible saved. Y'all that digital app say, you know, this the, the same cell phone that you be sitting your naked hind part on and surfing all them sites you got no business. You're gonna get up there and turn your Bible on and, and read the word. Uh -uh, no. Us old school saints, we, some of us might have earrings and tattoos and, and listen to R&B and cuss a little bit. I might drink a little Moscato, but we still touch and turn the word. So y'all don't know that song. You just know what Nancy? He's real, he's a real. Come on. Jesus is real to me. Come on, rock with it. Oh, yeah. He he give me the victory. And what you say? So many people die him. Hey! But I can't live without him. Hey! That is why I love him so. He's so real to read. Ah! Thank you! Oh, it's too much glory. Oh, you want me to pin the cash app? Uh, what is Nancy? Why don't you put it down there, Nancy? You got the whole lower third for it. I just need for you to do your job. That's what I need. Dollar sign M B N Network dot org. I mean, um, you know what I mean? If yeah. All right, let's go. Let's call her. Call her in and then six zero three six. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, my name is, I will be known as Peggy. I'm anonymous. Listen, two things I want to talk about. It's very interesting when P. 
people come into money, they don't know how to manage it. And I believe that's one of Relentless' biggest problems is that John is coming to money, NBA players coming to money. They need financial counseling. And I do not believe he understood what that meant because he bought the Avenger a car. He bought expensive clothes. Larry, I believe that is the problem. If we go back and look, everybody that makes these financial mistakes, they have not had the counseling, and it's the financial piece. If you lived in the ghetto the whole, your whole life and then move uptown, what do you do first? You buy clothes. You buy toys. You, you don't do the necessities, which is investment. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Hey, first-time caller, love your show. Out, I'm out. It's Peggy. Thanks so much, Peggy, for calling in. And th So there's a, a financial piece. This is something that I do know. That mi money is a mirror. Money is a mirror. Everybody type that. Money is a mirror. M-I-R-R-O-R. -R -R. Money is a mirror. And it will reflect you. Now, the thing about that is, if there is anything that is in you that is undone, not mature, underdeveloped, a, a, a dark drive, lust, passion, you're going to be able to look at your money and the pattern of, of, of spending, the what in your spend, the when in your spend, and you're going to be able to get a good view. In fact, I cannot know you, look at your money, your spending habits, and then prophesy to you. Money is a mirror. It's just the difference between me looking at your name or standing before me. It is a mirror and a reflection of the soul, typically the soul condition. I agree with Peggy. Peggy, you don't call him preach. I agree with Peggy. All right, let's call him. Call it in and then 0390. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Call it in and then 0390. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey there. Hi, I'm sorry about that, Larry. I was just trying to make sure everything was muted. Good, good evening, sir. I know I got one minute, so I want to keep it short. I respect everything you're doing. I respect you, and thank you for everything that you're doing and sharing. I just want to say this. They always come with this excuse. You know, I'm just a man. I'm just like you are. Well, why don't y'all come sit with us? Why do y'all get the special park spots? Why do y'all get the special office? Why do y'all get all these quote unquote special privileges. If you're just like us, sit amongst us. Get the word just like we get the word. We need the word. That's why we come in. You don't gotta pretend for us. We're not looking for that. We're not even asking for that. Be you brother, be you sister. Just come and sit amongst us and let those that are led to pastors not taking it as a job. Because with all due respect, I understand it is a job, so to speak, but it is a calling. Let's be clear. And I'm an 80s baby, so I don't go back that far, uh, uh, Larry, but I will say this. I'd rather take the, 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 the throat preachers. You know, that's a little annoying. I didn't like all that <laughs> and all that extra, but at least they were preaching the word. Give us the word. You know, these people these days, they sound good. They're nice and clear and articulate. And so it seems like they're the most populated or the most wanted. They're gifted. And that's fine. But I'll take the gift and the anointing and the glory. I want to be changed. You know, all this wishy-washy back and forth. That don't sit well with those of us that don't want to be double-minded. Now, I'm not saying they're the cause. I understand it's a personal salvation. But don't lead us into it. If this is what you're leading us into, we don't want you to be the leader. Can you excuse yourself and let somebody else do it? If the equipped elders in the church, I'm sorry, sir, I'm probably over my minute. You if talk. equipped people in the ministry, pass it on to them. But like you have been saying, the pride, the pride make them stay up there. We're not asking for that. We in the pews do read our Bibles. Like you say, I'm paper Bible saved. I got a few of them in my home. I don't like to use my phone. You know what I'm saying? I read the word. Now, I don't care what version or kind. I just ask the Holy Ghost to give me what I need. But the point is, why don't they just move on, move over, be a brother in the church? Come, you know, just come amongst and go out out. But if you're going to do this and call yourself the leader, pastor, bishop, or whatever you call yourself doing, don't say it's a Monday through Friday job because that's customer service. You in the wrong field. Thank you, Larry. Keep Thank doing you. what you're doing. God bless you and have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Enjoyed your commentary. 
All right, this is you guys' show, Larry Reed Live. The live expert is hot on tonight. The lines are open, 646-787-8174. I'm going to take about five or six more. One minute. Let's go. Caller in and then 0109. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Caller in and then. All right, Albany, New York. Let's go. So, so getting the left two lanes. Oh, let me turn this off. So, brother Larry, God bless you, brother, and I'm gonna say thank you for everything that you do. Um, if you if you if you if you need somebody that's licensed to carry, I'm licensed to carry. You good? <laughs> um, I just I just wanna let you know this, man. Uh, a lot of these pastors nowadays, man, they 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 have suppressed childhoods. So a lot of the suppressed childhoods comes out when they get money and when they get fame. A lot of pastors from my experience, are punks. They're not from the street. So I thank God for you for, you know, for calling them out. As I said before, you need that protection. You're good. You just call my line. You got, I got you. We're from Atlanta, New York. We keep moving like that. Yeah. But in John Gray's case, you know, John Gray just needs help. He needs prayer. And maybe he needs you. Maybe he needs Prophet Khan. Maybe he needs an intercessor to really pray over his being because he's not being the man of God that he should be. And I believe that his demons are coming out. And maybe he needs to get a divorce. And there's nothing wrong with divorce. I'm, mm. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of divorce. Mm. <laughs> don't, stay, don't stay in a situation. Don't stay in a situation and keep playing on somebody's emotions and, and hurting people. A lot of these pastors today, they're hurting people because of their suppressed childhood. And they haven't dealt with their, 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 their childhood experiences, lack of, lack of leadership, lack of father. You know, like Bishop Jordan to you, you guys are, you guys have your relationship. You have a spiritual father, you know, in your life. A lot of them don't even have that. They say, okay, Jake's is my father, but trust me, I don't think John Gray was on the phone with Bishop Jake's every night. He, he needed that. And this is what you're seeing today. Thank you so much. That suppressed childhood point <laughs> is a great contribution to this commentary. Thank you so much. And then if you listen to what mm -hmm. John Gray said, he actually said that one time about his childhood. Um, Bernard Jordan is my spiritual father, but aside from that, um, my daddy is my go-to, my mammy, my pappy, and a lot of people don't have that, which I think is when you don't have that, then you find a spiritual father or a mentor, that thing can really go to the side and go off a little piece, and most time it go off in the favor of the mentor or the spiritual father or the alleged covering, but in a different way. That childhood thing that he just said i think that's very true let's go um, further with these conversations caller Hello. in at 35 43 what's your name where are you calling from hello can you hear me yes i can hear you all right you, what's hello. your name where are you calling from how you doing my name is gail i'm calling from baltimore Maryland. how are you great yeah, I can hear you now. Um, I'm going to say some stuff. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Just listen to me through the Great. phone. You can hear me, and you say so say whatever you want to say. About the um, whole Keon situation. Um, I feel like in the Ernest Pugh situation, um, I'm not going to really put a lot of stuff out there like that. But, you know, we I've been knowing about Ernest Pugh when the new Simon's Baptist Church situation occurred. So I know about all that, about Ernest Pugh and his situation. What I will say about John Gray, just to pick, just to piggyback what, about, about his situation, I think that he does have some underlying issues. And, you know, as a body of Christ, we really put, we always have the tendency to sweep, put that under the, sweep it under the table, whatever, and don't really talk about those issues and stuff. And I think we really, I mean, as a community, we need to talk about it. Mostly everybody, mostly all the pastors that we talk about today have mental issues. And, you know, as you see Kanye West, whatever, he has mental issues and stuff, and he's dealing with, he's dealing with his situation. I think that, I mean, as a body of Christ, they really need to bring more, I mean, as far as psychiatrists back into the scene, whatever, so they can get the help that they need, whatever, before they a pastor, they have to be, become a better man. I think John, I think, I mean, as for John Gray, I think he's a great man, but he has a lot of issues, and I think he's a great leader. I think T.D. Jakes is a great leader, whatever. But he, I mean, it took him years to get to where he's at today, and I really think that most of these pastors need to really 
you know, go in and think about the issues that is going on. Like I look at um, Nation of Islam, whatever. They meant that I mean we need a, a, I mean a representation of how of how a men how men supposed to be. We don't have that in the body of Christ. As you know, what I'm saying we mm-hmm. stuff under the we sweep it under the rug. And that's my issue. Oh, about that. thank you so much for calling in. You don't said some great things. This is a conversation I had with somebody the other day. Well, actually, I listened to an interview. He said, Have a nice day. Oh, you too. He's a Christian, and he said that one of the things he learned prior to being a Christian, he learned in I, take them off the line, Cameron. He take them. He learned. He said he learned how to be a man in Islam, in the nation of Islam, because that's something they they really push, Farrakhan and them, you being a stand-up man, a stand-up father, a stand-up husband, a stand-up leader in the community. Okay, hold on for a minute. Who was that? Tell them I said turn everything off. Hold on for a minute, y'all. All right, I'm back. I don't know how much of y'all. I try to go off camera. But I'm saying what I I don't deal with no disrespect for child. I just don't. Okay, some had to handle that when I get up from here. And he said that they taught him how to be a, a man. I think that's something we're lacking in the Christian community. I really do. I really do. Another caller says something about that he's pro-divorce. I get what he meant, but I think divorce is the ugliest thing in the world. All right, another caller. Caller ending in 3740. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Larry. My name is Miriam Cole from Missouri. Hey there. Uh, just a couple quick things. As a former uh, first lady, one thing I, I would see, say with, with John Gray, he has not protected his wife. He, there's a lot of issues there. Too much, too fast. Too, um, uh, not proper guidance, I don't think, uh, 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 long term as far as his covering. But let me say this. When his wife went ahead and began to attack the, the women, he did not protect. He 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 knew he was in the wrong, and he let her go out and attack them, calling them evil, calling them witches, calling them devils. He also allowed her to do this on another social media platform with another commentator. I believe his name was Derek uh, Jacks or whatever. He allowed he yep. sat next to her while she did this. So I, I have major issues with him and his in his relationship with his wife. Major issues, not just his his. So right now he's got serious character flaws. This is the reason why this young this man needs to go sit down and have pastoral care for long term. We're not just dealing with just a spiritual thing. We're dealing with character issues here. Also, why would Pastor Ron Carpenter put himself and his wife in the position to be caught up in a lie? So I'm believing Pastor Carpenter at this point. Uh, I don't believe he, if he's, he's been flawless. His ministry has been flawless for years. I don't believe he would be lying at this point. So uh, John Gray, Avent- they, they, all, they both have to go sit down. And whoever has been under their leadership have to really consider and look at the fact that this man has not protected his wife, his family, and has left them exposed. Thank you so very much. I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you so much for um, calling in and the comments that you made. And I want to say something as it relates to something that you said. I'm not going to say, and I said for the same thing about William, that they need to sit down unless they refuse mentorship. They really need close mentor male mentorship. That's what they need. Mm-hmm. And if they mm-hmm. can connect mm-hmm. to someone, um, I think they can continue to pastor and do what they do as they have that relationship. But if they're not going to do that, in my opinion, if I was a member, first of all, I would leave. Um, but before I leave, I'll probably say that to him and see if he's going to make that change. If he's not going to do that, then I will go somewhere safe. I don't think that you're in a safe spiritual environment 
where the leader would not connect themselves to a mentor or and make whatever changes need to be made if you need to make them changes. That's that's me. And that's that's mm-hmm, what I, mm-hmm. I think about. The, the, the only reason why I say that, the, uh, uh, my leader consistently carrying on a lie, consistently carrying on misappropriation of funds, and boastfully doing this, boastfully doing this. These are consistent, uh, uh, um, like I said, character issues. Mm-hmm. Character issues. Now we're going into spiritual issues. So I, I couldn't. I could not stay. I couldn't stay. Mm-hmm. Now this has happened over a course of a year, maybe two years here. Mm-hmm. No one's perfect. Absolutely not perfect. Right. I'm yeah. not perfect. Got but it. As I said, Ninety seconds. About, uh, you know. Uh, we're talking about character. We're talking about uh, you put you you expose your wife and, and you. you you, you allowed her to say these things when you knew you were living a lie. You knew you had had these relationships. Uh, uh, you know, I, I I would have covered her a little bit more if you loved her. Yeah, I got that. Thank you so much that's, for call, for for calling in. Thank you. I'm I'm probably, I'm gonna have to go, but I want to make this statement. And this, sixty seconds. This may not be a statement that redemption or relentless is going to like. Um. But I want you to find a picture you can put the carpenters up there as well as the grays. Well, get to making it then, nigga. That's what I pay you for. Um, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, <clears throat> I want to make a statement. I don't want you guys to log off yet. Go ahead and hit like and share. And I'm going to make this closing statement. You may agree. You may not agree. I really don't know. But this is just what I think. We got John Gray and a venter saying, we've paid our bills. Okay. Ten seconds. Then we have Hope and Ron saying, no, you ain't. You haven't paid your bills. I have research that says there's supposed to be a payment around twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars supposed to be paid every month, and that was the payment that he was supposed to give to John Gray. Someone said to me, and this is alleged, um, that that payment is something that's word of mouth, and that payment is supposed to be made into an account that is supposed to be. F- um, part of Hope and Ron's retirement. Um, I think their retirement package will be around $6 million, which is about right, about $3 million a person. So that's about right. Um, And that's where he was supposed to make that payment into. And that's the word of mouth part. Then someone else said no. It was not word of mouth. It was written. It was in the written agreement, but he wouldn't sign all of the written agreement. And because he wouldn't sign all of the written agreement, then, you know, there's some other things that need to be done. I'm saying, you know, this is a full mess. And this is what I'm going to say. And you may may think I'm taking sides. A few things I don't like. I don't like that Nothing allegedly was put in detailed writing. I think that was poor. I think there was too much reliance on what God is saying, do what I feel in my spirit. Let's just go with God and not putting things in place. Because allegedly that's what I've been told happened. It's hard for me to believe, especially when you got white folk involved. White folk like writing stuff down. So I won't be surprised we find out that that ain't the truth. Um, And then... They gave him the keys to 20-something years of work. And allegedly a million dollars, but I also heard that they said that they didn't get that full payment. They didn't make that promise. They didn't come through with that promise. Um, And said, start your church. When I started my church, it was a building and me. I got on my face and I prayed until people gathered for me to pastor in all locations that I did. I didn't have all this internet and, and money and stuff that everybody got now. For you to be gifted 
a church on TV wife package for a house car books you have you come into these people's world 18 months you've been there and through the lawyer you sort of reprimand hope for allegedly emailing relentless members and I want y'all to hear this this he came in to change the name of the church. There were people already there that trusted Hope and Ron's leadership and choice and stayed. But you're going to reprimand her for emailing people that they probably have passed the 20 something odd years and, and say relentless members don't be contacting them. Then I heard on Layla Lynn who says that there hasn't been any taxes paid on the church that Relentless is in for 2018. The last time it was paid was when the carpenters paid it. And according to another rumor that I heard, and it's a rumor because I don't have any facts, I mean any paperwork, that okay, okay, if you up on the rent, there are bills that are connected in Redemption's name that you were supposed to assume that you never did. That's several months behind. Some haven't been paid at all since they've taken over. So my thing is to, to reprimand Hope for emailing, in my mind, their members. And then to preach a message yesterday, to, you know, that really, I saw this on Leela Lynn as well. That's so like priming the people, getting them ready for an exit. Talking about there's a call to the city, and if the even if it ain't in this building, it's we still got to do it. To me, I'm like, wait a minute. If you're gonna get up and just go, get up and go. 18 months compared to 20 something odd years, and somebody giving you keys to it. I just think that although the carpenters may have done something that I don't know about or there could be a merit, or what you're saying in, in your paper is true. I don't think that the Greys are handling this graciously. They handed you a golden key. How many pastors can start a church with that already? And then the thing the white folk do, I don't like. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> you know, we always want something because the grays be posting on social media. We want them to shut up. They don't be saying nothing. We want them to talk. We just always want something, don't we? But I don't like this. It's the full shame, but this is my job. Um, but I do like the conversation that it allow us to have because there's some things that we do need to discuss. It seems like this kind of going on doesn't rarely works out good because we've seen this on small levels with storefront churches. These type takeovers and mergers just don't tend to go right where there's a lot of narcissism, ego, maybe undeveloped. <sighs> I'm tired of this. I got to go. All right. See y'all later. Like the thing. And thank you so much for your donations for supporting this platform. If you enjoyed tonight, please, three, three dollars, 13 or 30. Please support this platform. All right. I love you. But I ain't going to sit here all day long. I'm about to get up out of here. A good, oh, yeah. The cash app is um, MBN Network. Uh, MBN Network. Same thing for Venmo. MBN Network. Um for Google Pay, it's LarryRelive at gmail.com. And then we can just go to the website, LarryRelive.com, and click Donate, and you can use American Express Discover or whatever you want to use to help us. Thank you so much. And I'm about to post in Patreon all the things that I read. God bless you. Oh, 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 oh.